Hello everyone, today we discuss how to start programming in Android Studio and the first step you need to move on to the Moodle course and to look into the preparation steps for practical tests and maybe you already know something we just using uh, GitHub as a version control system and you should uh, generate your link first and when you click it here you get the repository and you copy this link for later usage and you should put here all your progress during this course and the next step the assignments uh, for the project uh, we discuss later and for the task one to the five, uh, you need to do those steps. First, you need to install the Android Studio, and how to do that, you will find the link in the software section. And here, you just download this uh, Android Studio, the new, new version, newest one or latest, and after this, you install the Git from here. And after you make those steps, like more in here, find the download studio, install in your computer, and after do this, you just run it and the studio. And also uh, for that uh, practical tasks, you need uh, the Gmail account or profile uh, because we use the Firebase platform and when you uh, open the Android Studio first time you you always will see different results like configuration the project and later on the creating the new project and you will get a similar view like create from template maybe I just switch to presentation mode first and now you see the file new project you picking the uh, phone or tablet after this we picking an uh, empty activity you need to find here where is the empty activity here you see uh, because here the screen is a bit buggy UI and you pick empty activity here and for our task we're creating for example museum software and here the package name also you need to know that from example in the Google Play Store it's not allowed and you need to change to different package names like namespace for your project and down below you see the save space where to save your project and language we picking the Kotlin as the main and of course we're able to add it also Java coding in the same project and here you choose the minimum API it's around 100% it's okay here maybe if you'd like maybe take it a higher one like I don't know 24 21 or more doesn't matter really for a project and now if you would like you're able to support legend uh, legacy support libraries but not important for us now because we're using the uh, jetpack and Jetpack also have support for uh, backwards compatibility. And after you choose those steps, it's your, it's your choice which one you pick it. Because some APIs have more features. And as you see here, it's 94%. It's really huge here. And when you click finish, you're just creating the new project. By default, 
we'll get some uh, messages like uh, to update some software or to do something and I recommend it always to update to the newest version of stuff before you begin to work with Android Studio. Here it's like a buggy installer. I don't know before I tried to install the Kotlin was uh, drop the failed install. Now it's okay. I don't know. <laughs> there is some fix fixes after that test. And you're updating the Kotlin plugin to the newest version. And I would like to switch to the presentation mode here. And as you see, we'll get a basic structure of Android Studio. And the first step you should do here to understand the basic structure. Here is like app. Here is your project or Java module and when you have modules you're able to create like, uh, different modules if you have a huge project you always have multiple modules app and of course at the moment we creating not 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 so huge projects small applications and without a lot of functionality it's uh, not, not important to create another package at the moment. And here you need to know the manifest. The manifest is a phase of your application. Here is automatically added uh, generated XML text. Like you have the main activity. Uh, if you have more activities, you will see here uh, more activities. And be able to set parent and I forget where, uh, here, parent activity name. If you would like to get the back, like back symbol on your menu, on the top uh, action bar, be able to say the different uh, activities, parent, and automatically will get some symbol to back, link to back to another activity. Here, here also we're able to add more configuration, like added permissions, like if you need to storage, oh, sorry, storage or any storage, read, write, external, and and so on. Here it's adding permissions. Uh, that means your application asks for this permission when you're running your app. You're able to do here okay and now moving to the those two packages and to java here you write your main code like here it's starting main or main activity to start your app and it's not a good deal to check it it's working or not if you're running you of course first you need to create your uh, virtual device or you need to add your own device like and its phone and when you have uh, already configured like in tools avd manager be able to create new virtual device and you're picking your size of device any i recommend it, of course a smaller one because it's easier to create the great experience for small phones and better to update the uh, bigger screen phones like, or just medium size of phones a pixel of 5 inches it's, it's fine here you hit next and here is a problem when you picking the not the latest one uh, your emulator working really slow or you just need to wait in the newest version from the uh, api level 26 or 7 i'm not sure now um, by default you will get the saved uh, emulator state like uh, you're running emulator like uh, from the virtual machine 
like in two or three seconds only. You don't need to wait a long time like before was, like you were running the device and waiting uh, two minutes or more. Now you're able to instant run if you have uh, API big, bigger version. And here recommended, of course, you pick in here. If you would like to Google APIs, you need to pick with Google APIs. At the moment, it's visible here. As you see here, Google Play. If you see uh, Google Play is uh, available here, you're able to install your app in Emulator. Of course, if you're using your own device, there is no problem here. And of course, you have different images. Uh, you need Google APIs. If you're using APIs, you should be picking with, with APIs. And I already have downloaded Emulator, and you just hit the next when you install or download. Pick your uh, orientation and configuration here, and hit the next. Finish, and you will get your Emulator view for for your work. I already installed and I already run it this app here. And as I mentioned before, I just create the parent activity as an example. Sorry, not here. Parent activity name main activity. Uh, show to itself. If you run again, you will see different result. Here you will see the arrow back arrow. Like if you would like to make this uh, back, back, back uh, option or back action, you will able to add here current activity. And of course, we need to know more here the Android test and test C2 test, instrumental test and uh, unit test. But uh, for a moment, we don't use any tests. For our program, we use just know the those packages is for testing purpose. And here you will see your code. Okay, and moving to the next resource package, you will see the trouble. It's for images. As you see here, it's XML file. An XML file is written in vector format able to draw some images. Uh, and of course, here we're able to add some PNGs if you'd like. If you have some, uh, for example, images, uh, which project, this one, I need to close it. And maybe you have like Ubus 4D, copy, copy simple PNG and paste here. As you see, when you paste in here, there is multiple uh, versions of page uh, images, PNGs. Uh, when you're supporting multiple devices, you need to have drawable as a default uh, package. Drawable version 24, it's working from version 24 API. By default, when you put in here, you will be able to use anywhere. As PNG, it's drawable, as you see here in the cube. And those two is XML files, it's vector, vector type images. You're also able to create uh, the same images using the, uh, the vector SVG format. Okay, and here we're able to add more drawable stuff. After this, we're moving to layout. Layout is your layout for your phone. Um, here you're able to see designer for your app and activity main, activity main says that this depends to the main activity. If you'd like, you're able to see your source code. Here is a buggy interface at the moment. Um, maybe there is some option. How to open this XML file? Mm -hmm. Oh, here, code. 
split. Yes. As you see here, you you will see the result. Split is a new feature added in Android 4 Studio only. And as you see here, you're able to result to see results. Instantly here, you're able to write or create some components. If you if you'd like, you're able to use um, drag and drop better to create those elements. But if you already uh, experience and would like to write more XML code here, you're able to write XML uh, code. Like if you'd like to create button, just create uh, much parent. And cave is like 10 leaves. Oh, sorry, it's like 20. I need to switch off insert and activate numpad, then AP, and we close it here. Um, well, constraints, okay. Missing constraints because we not adding the where is this button exists here. Of course, we need maybe more. That is not the uh, not the best way to create your UI using only the XML file because if you starting programming or starting creating some apps, better use drag and drop and to create buttons like this. Dragging here, you adding constraints. Mm really hard to designer when you add in here you need to add constraints because the button is flowing on does doesn't know which place this button should should place here you just click uh, left and top it's okay here and when you hit in here you right seeing the constraints if you would like to center your button, you just click in there. Also, this one constraint, and here mark as zero and zero. It's like in the center of your phone. There's an app which screen. And here, are basically, it's features how to use it, uh, how to create your UI. And after this, we're moving to the next. Uh, topic because here you see set content view error layout activity main here the main screen is activity main XML file when you're running your app you see that main file we just check again here and you see the new button new button here and hello so we see the activity main and when you you're creating more windows or screens uh, as a Google recommended uh, as a single page a single single activity application there is some uh, also web apps like single page single page apps and here we're using the single activity application it's better more bugs and more problems we have single single activity programs and of course if your program it's a complicated or complex one you need maybe more than one activity for your task you need the splash screen activity also to create the separate which is uh, move you to the main activity okay mimap mipmap here is the icon for the launcher when you have the Android app, you will see the launcher icon, like you see here, uh, your icon, as you see here, or on the desktop or in your phone, launcher icon, and here is a new different screen sizes, images, you need to generate those, uh, there is some generators by default added to Android Studio, or online you're able to find uh, to manage uh, your um, launcher icon. As you see, you need 12 images to support all devices. 
and the late the latest part is wireless. Wireless is XML files, system information files, and when you're creating, you're creating like variables uh, to use for your UI later. And color primary is for your uh, for your primary like that one action bar and next we move to the color primary dark it's like top indicators that side and color accent it's always the buttons or like other stuff here this color that's it and how to use those wireless you're able to use those wireless also in your layouts or here if you'd like to uh, for example have background and maybe we'll pick this one the background add color color primary for example you're able to use your primary color for this component here from this string you are able to create any wireless as a text and here you have the string resources and uh, here you're creating your uh, strings variables why you need this because if you would like to create some locale uh, for your tasks also you need to create locale and for example now we have english language and open editor be able to plus new locale for example any locale you would like to see um, Lithuania, Lithuania, LT, as you see here. That one, or that one, doesn't matter really at the moment. And as you see here, Lithuanian, you will get some flag. In a language, and here, as you see, default value is English, is our. And you're able to pick untrans untranslatable. You're not able to translate that while well, it's always a static. Or if you're translating, you need to add it in the Finn language. Mozilla, for example. And when you finish this, you move to the your file and see here it's museum. Here it's Mozilla. And you have different locale strings. And when you're switching to your locale in application, for example, we go to activity and instead hello world, maybe we need to size um, font size. text size. Yes, we switch into more to see right here. And you see here, hello, in that property. And now I would like to add instead of static text, like you fix it for static text, you change it to your add app name. And add app name by default is museum. When you're running the app, you will see the result is museum. Oh, it's Lithuanian locale here, I think. And if you switching the language, uh, here settings, color, oh, no, be different. Uh, here I switching uh, to English. Let you see English first, Lithuanian second. Now it's English. Which, and you see instead of Lithuanian locale, you will see the app in English. And here it's basically reason why you need not the hard coded strings, and you need a separate file to create. Or those locales, like, or if you have more locales, you're able to control this. I like open and later add translations here. 
styles, also style for the themes. Uh, all apps have some themes, and if you use your own theme, you're able to add the themes as you see here, it's creating your style and change that theme later. At the moment, you know you need to know that here it's adding the themes here. And now we move into the last part here to the Gradle scripts. By default, we using or Android Studio using the Gradle script, and this Gradle script is um, to control your project it's automation tool, to add dependencies, to add some plugins, to add some libraries, uh, to add some. Uh, automation uh, for your project creation and some configuration and etc. And you see here it's project level build Gradle file and module app. For our case, we're using the both that one and this one. Uh, this one represents your project, like uh, which repositories from where to download uh, packages or dependencies and the plugins and there is some new ones also some recommendations will you will see here like mark as yellow color or, or any different colors highlighted here because maybe its version is different now when we update it here uh, as you see here it shows 1.410 like this version it's now the newest one and you always need to click the sync when there is uh, all warnings gone uh, you're able to to move to the next configuration file and the build gradle for module lab you will see the plugins we're using Kotlin, Kotlin extensions. It's for easier to write the code using Kotlin extensions. You don't need to create some uh, variables. You just uh, straightforward uh, move to the XML file and able to point from Java or Kotlin code. For, from Kotlin code, not Java at the moment. Yeah, and here you see a compiled SDK version. API minimum 21st and target is 30. The application ID is namespace, version code is for Google Play Store. If you publishing your final version of app, you need to change in that versions always because Play Store is not allowed to the same version up to upload. You need to change the version each time when you publish into your app in Play Store. Uh, here you're able to control build types like release, deb debug, and etc. And as you see also warnings, you hit Alt Enter, change to another version, and it's not changing here. Sync, now it's okay. And here it's your dependencies part. Uh, I think that here is the main part where you're working at the moment for your app. As you see here, it's the dependencies, unit tests, and config layouts, and main core uh, dependencies. And the next step, what you need to do before you start to write the code, you need, of course, to learn syntax Kotlin and we learned syntax during the lectures also. And in the tool section, there is Firebase. For our project, we're using Firebase platform. It's a cloud, uh, cloud backend or mobile backend as a service. You need to have the uh, Gmail profile or account to use Firebase. Before you start, you need to create or if you already have, you, you need sign in only. Here, 
hit the Firebase. And by default, if you have not added at the moment, you need to allow your uh, profile to access some, I don't know, profile information and be able to use it. And for our case, we're using real-time database or Firestore. If using Firestore, we need to uh, just hit on the system, like connect to Firebase. And after a few minutes, we are able to create new project. And as you see here, sign in as Mars Chuzhersky at Gmail. And create new or choose existing if you already have some existing. If you doesn't have, you're just creating a new project like museum. And hit connect to Firebase. <laughs> After few settings, few seconds, I don't know if it's connecting or not. Maybe we just hit again. Oh, connect. Mm -hmm. We are registering Android. Download Firebase and as you see, connected. Successful. Okay. And after this, all oh, twice run. Okay. Sorry <coughs> for my presentation. Okay, it's connected. And after this, if you need to use the real time database or Firestore or any tools or APIs from the Firebase platform, you need to add dependencies. Hit here like add cloud and as you see project level at uh, Google services you need to have this and in emulator also you need to, to have the API uh, or Google Play Store chosen that type emulator to work this and also in the app, uh, app level Gradle file Adding plugin Google services and dependency for Firestore asset changes. As you see here, you get some new dependencies. As always, you need to hit Alt Enter and change version. The newest one, and you, when you're changing, you need to sync your Gradle script to update your project to the newest library. And here, of course, you're able to switch in between this version and automatically download from, from here. Uh, it is a warning here. You have the RA, SDK. Here is project settings. There is no problems. There is some warning. At the moment, we skip this warning now. Okay, sync now. Because we not synced already. And here are some examples how to use your Fire Store. But as you see here, uh, here is Java code. <laughs> of course, it's all the all the system uh, guide here. And of course, if you're using the Java code, it's okay, but if you're using a Kotlin code, it's, here is a bit problem. You're able to try to copy here, like in your name, try to add. As you see here, able to convert from Java to Kotlin. Yeah, it's automatically converting this code. But sometimes you will get strange results for converting. Or not, not not a nice code because uh, Java style and converting the same Java style code to the Kotlin code it's like the same Java code it's in different language. Of course, 
what you need to write from begin your own. And to find this documentation, it's best way go to the console fire score or first you need but firebase google.com firebase google.com you're able to choose the android platform and here you will find your all stuff guides etc like cloud fire store getting started and what you need to do you will see here kotlin and kotlin java Swift, etc. Where we where you would like to use it here, and if you would like to just in, in initiate your database, you just add the, the single line and here how to add it to the database and read data, select data, etc. And all APIs added here. Go to console. It's move your to the console and you're able to create from here project or to find your own project museum here and here you need uh, data sharing matter at the moment um, here you'll see authentication section like sign methods you able to add any type of sign methods Cloud Firestore, uh, that database which uh, already we added to our project, use it test mode, enable, and you're ready to go to use your Firestore. Uh, how to use it and etc. I will show later in the next lectures, and you just ready to use the firebase and your projects ready to use firebase any different apis for storage for authentication and etc admob or machine learning and etc here's collection and later we adding some stuff here and now you are ready to uh, create your app and before you start, I recommend it, of course, to create a structure because in your uh, recommendations uh, for the individual tasks, uh, task one, task two, you, you need to use navigation component architecture like Jetpack. We we'll later look into those deeply. And we using MVVM pattern or architecture for your application. For the first, I recommend it to create only that packages like package uh, models, uh, another package package models, view models, because MVVM it's view, view model and model, view, view model. Like this, and also we using the repository for data like Firestore or any other stuff. Repositories. Okay. Models, repositories, new models, and next lecture maybe we'll see uh, some example how to use this, how to create a code. And of course, first we'll learn a bit um, Kotlin syntax. And after we learn some Kotlin syntax, we able to create a few classes to add to our app. And thank you for your attention. And I would like to um, ask if you have any questions or not understanding how to configure this or not able to configure some stuff or not working or computer is too slow etc i will wait for more questions from you and in software section section already there are different options uh, to have the emulator be able to have nox player it's a bit faster than the default one 
and of course you will be choose any different emulators for the start. First I recommend to create like this project that fires fire the base and to create that model repository to model and start to learn Kotlin syntax. Basically you will find online in Kotlin Kotlin language right here and kotlinlang.org here and here just for the android also there is some beginning basic syntax oh it's new 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 documentation but also able to learn for I don't know where is the basic syntax maybe you just find some different location, mobile cross platform, server size, web data size. Maybe it's Android, it's okay here. Basic, basic types, as you see, basic type syntax, and etc. Yeah. Okay, 